I first met Guy several years ago, shooting pool in a local bar. Guy was a successful prostitute, or working girl, as is the preferred phrase here in Thailand. Guy had secured a foreign business executive as her sponsor, and had ample money and substantial free time at her disposal while he was working or occupied with his wife. As long as things were okay with her sponsor, meaning he was providing a good monthly endowment, Guy was happy playing pool and cards and gambling on both. Shooting pool was, in the beginning, just a pleasant diversion, I think. However, as time went by, Guy began to enter local bar tournaments, eight ball and nine ball, developing both a passion and a skill for the game and beating all the women entrants and most of the men. Guy came into her own as a pool hustler not because she is the best player around or even the best woman player, but because she is quite attractive and sexy as well as being a skilled player. Somehow this combination disarms the foreign men who come to the pool hall looking for a game with some money to put down on the side. The pool of cash Guy played for grew, game by game, day by day, until she found herself involved in and winning matches for over a thousand dollars at a time. On one occasion, I saw her end a four-hour match with a foreigner, winning a pot of cash amounting to around four thousand dollars. Guy, in Thai fashion, was generous when she won, which was most often the case, and would buy drinks for all her friends and supporters. However, she had aroused some jealousies. Another Thai player had introduced her most lucrative foreign mark to the pool hall where Guy was hustling. This led to a belief on his part that he should share in Guy's winnings. Also, several of the lesser Thai hustlers, all men, approached her with differing ideas of how she could help them score off the mark. But Guy rejected them all out of hand. To her, this was her mark, and they could do their own hustling. Then one night, after moderate winnings, she was faced by three men wearing black ski hoods waiting near her apartment. They jumped her, threw a hood over her head, put her in the back seat of a car and drove away. They held a gun to her head and relieved her of all her cash winnings and her gold bracelets and her necklaces and her special Chattakam good luck omelette. This event marked the beginning of a decline in Guy's fortunes as a pool hustler. She was absent for about two weeks and the next time she showed up at the pool hall she was accompanied by two big rough-looking guys dressed all in black with big Chattakam medallions hanging on chains around their necks. These guys were, I was told, her bodyguards. They continued to be around for the next month or so until she felt that the threat had diminished. However, the bloom was off the rose in terms of her hustling for serious money. Guy kept on drinking and playing but couldn't replicate the winning she had scored previously as she was now known to most players Thai and foreign. Eventually her money began to run out and after a fight with her toy boy Australian boyfriend, she had been using her sponsor's money to pay for him, Guy decided it was time to go back to sex work. There was also a rumor going around that the guys who had robbed her once were still in business and possibly had her marked for a second try. I did see her again, once or twice, looking for a money game at Jack's Bar, but it was obvious that she had lost some of her confidence and she soon stopped appearing at all.